Welcome to this walkthrough of the Weights and Biases Model Registry. Part one of this video will cover model logging and how to register your best models in the registry. Part two will cover how to consume, document, and automate processes from the registry. But first, let's define a model registry, which is a repository of a team's trained models where ML practitioners publish candidates for further evaluation or production. Consumers, whether those be downstream teams or processes, can then retrieve those important models from a central place. Users can log their model checkpoints to weights and biases via artifacts. Artifacts enable users to log and version large serialized files. An artifact encapsulates all of the files and directories and consists of a user-defined name, a type, user-defined metadata in the form of keys and values, a description, and the files and directories themselves. To create an artifact, all a user needs to do is create a run, create an artifact object, giving it a name, and in the case of models, a type of model, and then adding the paths to the directories and files to that artifact before finally logging it as part of a run. In this example, I'll talk through how to log your model checkpoints as part of a PyTorch training loop. First, we create a run with oneeb.init, passing in our project, team entity, job type, and hyperparameter configurations. Throughout the training loop, we're logging training metrics, along with evaluation metrics, and at the end of each epic, we're serializing the model to Onyx. In this snippet of code, we're creating an artifact object, giving it a name, a type of model, and different metadata, such as the format. Finally, we're adding this model, the path to the model Onyx file to the artifact and logging it as part of the run. When you log an artifact, you can also append aliases to indicate which versions are your best or latest during the course of training. In the Weights and Biases workspace, you can find your artifacts in the Artifacts tab. Here we see all artifacts that have been logged across my project as the team has iterated and retrained the models. On the left here, I have this anomaly classifier, which has five checkpoints that have been logged during the course of training with my best one indicated with this alias. With artifacts, I can understand all the metadata surrounding these files, such as when it was created, number of files, the size, and importantly, the exact experiment which generated this model checkpoint. I can also inspect the metadata, the files themselves, and look at a lineage view of all upstream and downstream runs and artifacts. Artifacts is a convenient way to store and manage all of your model checkpoints over time for a given project. Before getting into the model registry, I want to show additional integrations that allow you to log artifacts easily. If you're using PyTorch Lightning, you can use the model checkpoint callback and the WandDB logger to log model checkpoints automatically as artifacts and weights and biases. Simply indicate whether you want to log all checkpoints at a regular interval or just the last checkpoint at the end of training. Pass this WandDB logger into your trainer and you should be good to go. Similarly, if you're using Hugging Face, all you have to do is set these environment variables to again indicate when and how to log your checkpoints whether at the end of training or on a regular basis. Set the environment variables, indicate to your trainer that you're reporting to WandDB, and your checkpoints will get logged automatically. Finally, teams often already store their models in an object store like S3 or GCS. You can log these assets to weights and biases as well as reference artifacts. In this case, weights and biases does not copy the checkpoints. We just manage a reference 
along with metadata like the checksums, file sizes, and so forth. This enables you to understand exactly what experiment generated a given asset in some S3 or GCS bucket. In this example, we just create the artifact object with a name, a type of model, add our reference to the GCS or S3 bucket, and then log the artifact. Just make sure that if you're logging references or consuming these models, you need to have the right credentials to your appropriate cloud bucket. Back in the artifacts tab, we can observe we have lots of models sitting here in our project. This can be hard to wrangle, and it can be hard to identify what exactly is my most important model that I want to move on to production or evaluation. The model registry allows us to highlight or bookmark the best models that we have in a given project. All we have to do is select the artifact that we think is best, and then click link to registry, where we can indicate what registered model we want to bookmark this specific version under. Registered models are designated ML tasks, which are documented and versioned over time in a central place where multiple consumers can come and understand how to use a given model. For this anomaly classifier, I don't have an existing registered model since this is the first instantiation of it. So let me create a new registered model. I can also paste a model card to better document the entire model, how to use it, its background, and so forth. I can also add a tag to better organize all of the registered models I have in my organization. Finally, I can add additional aliases to indicate the stage of this model, such as if it's in staging or this is a production model that needs to go and get deployed. Linking that to the registry, we can now see the model, its model card, and the bookmarked version from our granular project we saw earlier. The model registry is a team scoped page that houses all of the important checkpoints across your different projects. So as teams iterate and generate hundreds, if not thousands of checkpoints in their individual projects, they can bookmark the most important ones under registered models in the model registry. Here we have a bunch of different models for different use cases, like document extraction, image segmentation, and review summarization. Each one of these we can click into, understand the model card, and then click into the specific version that was bookmarked under this registered model. And that's part one of our Weights and Biases model registry walkthrough. In part two, I'll walk through how to effectively consume, document, and automate processes from the model registry.